Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Well, looky, looky what we have here, a Bitcoin moving up past that resistance level, guys. Take a look at Bitcoin right now. Bitcoin price has surpassed the 44.6 level, and we are now sitting at about 45,200 per BTC. I think you guys can probably see that a little better on the one hour charts. So now what? What the heck is happening? Is this momentum going to be sustained? You know, over the last couple of weeks, I've been saying we're going to see a correction. And, uh, you know, the thought was we had to get past this level here at around uh, 44.7. Well, we have surpassed that level, guys. So is this enough momentum to suggest that we are uh, going to continue the bullish trajectory upward? All things that we're going to talk about today, am I going to be able to get into some more altcoin positions? All very interesting questions. Well, you know, I'm holding off uh, at least as of now, but I do still think, guys, there is a case for a Bitcoin to retrace. I know it did go up past this $44,700 level, but... You know, I think it is still very narrative dependent. Now, CryptoCon, if you guys remember, uh, one of his posts, one of his earlier posts, he was talking about the 0.618 and that level uh, having to hit before Bitcoin retraces. Uh, he posted this uh, yesterday morning. So this post was before we saw the price of Bitcoin start to move up. I have been bullish on Bitcoin for all of 2023, but the data shows us it's time for a cool down now to start off the new year 2024. It's a battle between reliable long-term data and those who think that this time will be different. I know which side I'm on, a 30% correction. So he's suggesting 30%. I was uh, saying, you know, we have seen 20% uh, corrections in the past, and uh, I would be happy with a Bitcoin in the mid 35,000s. But he's saying uh, down to around 30,000. Uh, and that percentage is much less than in previous examples. The data structure looks just like the example in 2019 with the double peak in red. So he was uh, taking a look at this here. And what he is suggesting is a 30% correction is in the cards. If we look at the DMI and the fact that it is overheated, we saw it in 2012, 2016, 2019. And now, guys, we're in 2024. We are in this level here. So boom, I mean, uh, if the cycle trends are to repeat themselves, then we could see a Bitcoin price move further downward. Let me just put Bitcoin here on the daily uh, just to show you guys what he was uh, talking about a few, I, I want to say a few weeks ago, Bitcoin hitting that 0.618, throwing a Fibonacci here on the Bitcoin, what he was suggesting. And he's, he was saying that uh, it, it got to this point a little early. I guess he was looking at the 0.5 down and around here. Uh, well, now we're beyond that 0.5 on the Fibonacci. We would have to get up to this level here, which historically has denoted a Bitcoin retracement. So that actually would be 48,700 per Bitcoin. So we'd have to see Bitcoin climb uh, over $3,000 to get up to the 0.618. And what he is suggesting is at that point uh, is when we will see that retracement. We saw it back here, uh, the bull run uh, that topped in 2017. Whoops. The bull run that topped in 2017, we saw it here. If I throw a Fibonacci on there, you guys can see the 0.618 before the retracement down. And again, if I bring the chart over here, you guys can see this uh, in 2013. Throw a Fibonacci on there. We did see the 0.618 right in around here. Boom, before we saw that retracement downward, before it really started to move up. So I don't know. I mean, it's anybody's guess, but, uh, you know, the signs point to the fact that, uh, you know, maybe we have not even hit that point yet. Maybe we are eyeing 48,700 per coin before we start to see that move. Now, with regards to XRP, I guess I should take a look at XRP here. Uh, XRP, guys, right now we're seeing an XRP price trading in around 63 cents. So not too much movement for XRP, but this grind to the upside is looking very, very nice. Very, very fertile ground for a big blast off that Nike swoosh pattern. Checking out there. Nick Crypto Crusader saying this, guys, say what you will about XRP, but look at this chart for a second. And I mean, really look at it. We have now turned one of the biggest levels of resistance into support. And we have just been building pressure on top of that until the XRP BTC pair breaks out. We will most likely range for a bit. But how can you look at this chart and not be bullish? So what he's looking at is uh, this level here, which... Uh, we haven't really talked about much. Basically, the level where we're at right now, right in and around here, guys, I just put a horizontal line there. You guys can see it touched not once, but twice. So once back in September 2018, and then once again in November of 2020, two levels of resistance here. You guys can see those two levels of resistance. And now it's looking as though we are building support above that, or at least just starting to build support above that. He goes on to say the floor is already built. We just need to be patient at this moment. And I know we have been patient for a while, but now is not the time to mess this up. 
2024 is already shaping up to be an incredible year for crypto, and I personally believe this will be the biggest year yet for this industry. So guys, I know, I know, I know, and I'm sure, uh, you know, a lot of the altcoins too are really moving right now, and I'm sure uh, it's very, very hard not to start FOMOing in to some of these coins. If you just take a look at the, uh, well, the, the general crypto market, we can see, uh, I guess I, I guess I should scroll back up here, 73. So greed is now back up. It's pumped up five points from 68 yesterday. The 73 today, you can see a sea of green for altcoins, and I know now is the time when people want to FOMO in, but guys, now is the time to do exactly the opposite. If some of your cryptos are up quite a bit, maybe it's time to sell a portion. I know I'm gonna be letting my Patreon subscribers know when I'm gonna be selling out of some of those altcoins. Some of them are still pumping and some of them have actually started to wake up. Still waiting on a few though. Uh, all this to say guys, FOMO is our worst enemy uh, at this point in the bull run. In terms of cryptos like XRP though, there is still an opportunity there. Now, why are we actually seeing, uh, you know, these, these coins move? Why is Bitcoin up? Uh, seemingly out of the blue after a holiday Monday, January the 1st. Ian Bins brought up something interesting. I'm just going to scroll through his feed here. He posted a few things here, guys. Take a look at the USD to Korean won. The USD just dropped 99.8% against the Korean won. So that's interesting. Check this out too, guys, from Just Dario. Breaking CHF. Massive dump just hit. Well, well, well. Give me a glitch, but give me two or three. This is the euro to the CHF. And the CHF, for those of you guys who do not know, is the Swiss franc. So look at that chart too. It has also come down. So some fiat currencies against others coming way down. Take a look at this dump watcher. US one month T-bills yield has skyrocketed 13% in a day. Uh, and then you wonder why Bitcoin is going up. Of course, he's uh, comparing this to the Bitcoin chart also going up. Uh, he also posted this. If this is not a glitch, something huge just blew up. T-bills, one month yield spike 72 basis points above 6%. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot going on right now with regards to traditional finance and uh, fiat currency too. So could this also be another reason why uh, we're seeing Bitcoin price start to spike? Of course, there is the looming ETF that is going to be approved very, very soon, or, uh, you know, at least some are suspecting that. First, I wanted to give you guys an opposing opinion here. Ali here at Ali underscore charts with Bitcoin's open interest nearing $11.5 billion. The market may be entering a crowded trade zone. This surges open interest while indicating increased Bitcoin trading activity could also signal market volatility. So note what he is saying here, guys. And he posted this this morning. So this was after uh, Bitcoin started to see that spike up. This surge in open interest while indicating increased Bitcoin trading activity could also signal market volatility going long right now on Bitcoin bears risk, especially if the market consensus shifts unexpectedly. In other words, do not go chasing green candlesticks because we could be very, very close to the top. I mean, as indicated in that uh, in that former thesis, hitting the 0.618, bringing us up here to the $48,000 level. At this point, we could, in fact, start to see that downturn and uh, some are predicting anywhere between 25 to 30%. I was even saying 20%, but uh, you know, if it is more, again, another opportunity to cost average into some other altcoins. And I do still think there is an opportunity for this, despite the bullish Bitcoin sentiment. I say this, guys, because this isn't my first rodeo. And just take a look at the narrative. Look at how bullish the narrative is. Michael Branch posting this. As the most anticipated deadline for a Bitcoin ETF approval draws closer, the United States SEC faces a tight deadline with a pile of paperwork still waiting to be sorted out. This courtesy of Coin Paprika here, basically outlining how Eleanor Turret has voiced her doubts about an immediate approval. Guys, I've got the tweets up here. Basically, Eleanor Turret did come out say, you know, while the SEC is surely unpredictable, it would surprise me if approvals were to happen tomorrow. She posted this yesterday afternoon. From what I understand through conversations I've had with issuers, the SEC still has to review all the changes made to the S1 filed on Thursday and Friday and make comments on them. If the SEC follows a similar approval timeline for the Ethereum futures in October, the agency will, after this round of reviews, communicate to the issuers uh, a date that they want uh, final S1s to be filed and make them effective in the subsequent 24 to 48 hours. And uh, we have to remember, it, we just came out of the holidays, so the SEC staff has been off since Friday. So a Tuesday or even Wednesday approval seems tight, but we shall see. Uh, she originally uh, retweeted out the Wolf of All Streets here. Scott Melker, who basically was asking ETF approval tomorrow, 
Well, that is the rumor. So uh, we could, in fact, be seeing uh, Bitcoin getting front run on that news as well. And uh, I mean, the narrative is funny. You know, it always seems to match up with what is happening in the market. And guys, this is by design. So if we do see the news, the bullish news run up to the 0.618, and then all of a sudden we hear about a delay in the ETF, would you really be surprised? I know personally I would not. Some people commenting down here like stock money lizards. That is so needed. We need a new narrative for the bull market. Uh, Zara Betts down here saying, oh, the Bitcoin ETF approval rumor. Uh, I'll just add to that to my crypto prediction bingo card right next to Dogecoin becoming the official currency of Mars. Anthony Aquadro here saying, nope, would be surprised if they all get denied. So some mixed sentiment here. Uh, we've also got Charles Gasparino breaking regarding the Bitcoin ETF. People at BlackRock say it's radio silence from the SEC and Eleanor Turret sources say the amount of paperwork the SEC still needs to go through uh, to make the announcement will likely occur near the end of the week. So uh, just to kind of sum up what this article was stating here. So I wanted to thank uh, Michael Branch here, Eleanor Turret, of course, the Wolf of All Streets and Charles Gasparino just for posting that. One other thing I wanted to mention here that uh, I forgot to mention that I believe somebody uh, mentioned here in one of these tweets, uh, or rather it was something that I read this morning, was the XRP to BTC chart, guys. We are on the precipice of a breakout there too. So in terms of XRP breaking, out. Uh, as you guys can see here, this is the uh, XRP to BTC chart. And uh, generally what we see is uh, XRP hitting this level of support before we see a turn to the upside. So it happened there. It happened there. And guys, take a look at how close we are getting to that price level, that support level down here. And if it means anything to you, it's 0.00001334 uh, big, uh, XRP to Bitcoin. So Theoretically, it could be that XRP really does need to hit this level here before we do see a break to the upside against Bitcoin. But again, guys, uh, you know, general market sentiment is suggesting that everything is moving, at least as of now. But I wanted to keep moving on because yesterday I mentioned this and I don't think I gave it enough uh, enough attention. Goldman Sachs predicts the crypto market is to explode as regulation of blockchain will mature digital assets in 2024. This courtesy of ISO 2022. Let's do it. Now, guys, this is just another uh, institutional player here, in this case, Goldman Sachs, suggesting how big crypto is going to be in the coming year, this year particularly, 2024. So according to Matthew McDermott by Goldman Sachs, institutions will mature digital assets by scaling proprietary blockchains in 2024. So it's not just going to be the assets themselves, but the technology behind them. McDermott thinks that traditional assets will be tokenized before more exotic ones, both of which will have settlements streamlined. He added that Bitcoin exchange traded funds will grow gradually and add Bitcoin to their overall liquidity if they are approved in 2024. He says, if, 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 uh, you know, we still don't have the confirmation on that, although, uh, you know, the price of Bitcoin is uh, suggesting that, uh, yeah, it's going to happen. Down here, it says McDermott predicts that traditional assets will be tokenized ahead of their more exotic counterparts. Less common assets will benefit the most in the area of liquidity, pricing, visibility, pricing, and transparency. His sentiments echo that of uh, William Quigley, the co-founder of the collectibles focused blockchain Wax. Quigley told B in Crypto he expects the tokenization industry to build a niche in 2024 before maturing over the next six years by 2030. So that 2030 target still holds up. And, uh, you know, the latter half of the 2020s is looking to be that building phase where we're going to see magnificent growth in this crypto space. So again, guys, this is coming from Goldman Sachs. Let's not forget these institutional players are now uh, revealing themselves as pro cryptocurrency. Michael Branch also bringing this to our attention. Bitwise says an unnamed investor plans to see $200 million into their Bitcoin spot ETF. A crypto manager at Bitwise says that an unnamed investor wants to seed hundreds of millions of dollars, plan to invest into this spot market Bitcoin ETF or exchange traded fund. According to the new S1 document filed with the SEC, an unidentified investor is planning on seeding $200 million into Bitwise's ETF specifically. And guys, here's a quote. An unnamed investor has indicated an interest in purchasing an aggregate of up to $200 million of shares in this offering from authorized participants or in the marketplace through broker dealers. However, because indications of interest are not binding agreements or commitments to the purchase, this potential purchaser could determine to purchase more, fewer, or no shares. So that is not confirmed. But guys, look at the rumor mill. Big money coming in. Also note this down here. Bitwise S1 has been filed and it looks like someone, I wonder who, is going to see BitB, which is their uh, uh, Bitcoin ETF name with $200 million, which blows away BlackRock's $10 million that we know of. That's going to be a huge help in the early days of the race. No AP named, but probably forthcoming. 
So this is the other thing, right? Uh, between the players that are getting into this, they are in competition with one another. They are vying now for eyeballs, vying now for investors because they want to be the preeminent Bitcoin ETF. So they're going to do what they can in order to bolster their bottom line as well. And this just overall, guys, is going to be very, very bullish for Bitcoin specifically, but for the rest of the crypto market in general too. So I wanted to thank Michael for posting that. Think of it, mainstream crypto adoption is taking shape. We've got BlackRock at $9.6 trillion, Vanguard $8.1 trillion, Fidelity at 4.2, UBS 4.2, uh, State Street, Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan. These are all the investment firms getting into Bitcoin. So this is happening very, very fast. XRP Drops also pointing this out. The approval will lay the foundations for a more regulated market. This is a clip of Hassan Ahmed, okay, from Coinbase. He talks about Bitcoin playing a central role in advancing regulations. Listen to this. But in the wake of FTX, doesn't the right, and I'm talking globally here, doesn't the right regulatory framework need to be in place in order to see those secular flows that you refer to, Hassan, come in when the Bitcoin ETF does start? A hundred percent. And this is, I think, one of the big things that is uh, happening associated to the ETF as well. Uh, although in the U.S. that the regulatory conversation is still evolving, uh, but the fact that despite that, uh, this ETF is starting to come into its being uh, and the SEC is making way for it, uh, signals that just the, the demand and the, the weight that's being put behind uh, this asset class is too loud to ignore now. Uh, and what it does is it further um, destigmatizes and legitimizes sort of this asset class by providing kind of a, a familiar and compliant channel for these asset managers and allocators to be able to access this, uh, this asset. Hassan, Happy New Year. Uh, talk to me about uh, the SEC set to approve BTC ETFs. How soon are you expecting that to happen? One and two. How big is this going to be? This is um, this has been hap in in the conversation and in the works for uh, sort of years and years at this point. Um, actually, the industry has been pushing this for almost a decade now. If you recall, a few years ago, the futures ETF was approved, and then on the basis of that, there were some um, sort of legal opinions that were made that uh, there's not enough structural dissimilarities between a futures ETF and a spot ETF. Uh, that also, I think, forced the SEC's hand uh, somewhat in getting us to this point. So how close are we? Well, January 10th is uh, the deadline that everyone's sort of looking at uh, in terms of, you know, whether the SEC formally sort of approves it um, or defers it further. Mm -hmm. So it's not a, a done deal, but where the market and consensus seems to be is that this is sort of inching closer, um, especially signaled by the level of technical questions and diligence that uh, the, the, the SEC team has been doing uh, with these issuers. And if we get the green light or if the SEC uh, gives the green light, how, how big is this going to be? Well, one way to, uh, to look at it, one signal to think about is that the 30 trillion advised uh, kind of wealth management industry in the U.S. currently uh, is locked out uh, from accessing uh, this asset class. Uh, you know, uh, wealth managers such as you know, Merrill Lynch, UBS and whatnot, um, they, they, they have a certain way that they do things and there is a certain way that they construct portfolios. Um, their clients have been asking them for years, hey, I just want all my assets in one place and I want some exposure to this asset class, whether it's for price appreciation, whether it's for you know, a fiat uh, hedge or inflation hedge and whatnot. Uh, so I think this will then make these portfolios more efficient. And I do think that this will start getting recommended soon. We've $30 trillion on the sidelines from the big players, guys. All these institutions that want to get into Bitcoin, vying to get into Bitcoin and competing so that potential clients will use them to invest in a Bitcoin ETF exchange traded fund instead of their competitors. So this is how it's looking. Wanted to thank XRP Drops for posting that. And guys, the ISL Goat also mentioned this, okay, from Alessandro Ottaviani. Very wise words here. Many years from now, it will be normal to look at the Bitcoin history and clearly distinguishing two eras, the era before the Bitcoin spot ETF approvals and the era after the Bitcoin spot ETF approvals. Between the 2nd and the 10th of January, we will assist at this shift, a legendary moment in the history of Bitcoin. And considering that Bitcoin is the best form of money humanity has ever had, well, I don't know if I agree with that, but he's making the point nonetheless. It also is a legendary moment in the history of human beings. Uh, Eric Balchunas and uh, Jay Seifert, the moment you will announce the approval to the world will be a very unique one, likely the most important moment of your professional careers. And just to tack on to that, another one here from Alessandro, courtesy of the ISO GOAT, nine days to the last deadline for the SEC to decide on ARK's Bitcoin spot ETF. Between now and then, the SEC will likely approve all or most of the Bitcoin spot applications. We are finally at the single digit countdown. 
the rumors are saying that the SEC, after the submission deadline of December the 29th, could already approve the ETFs tomorrow or on January the 3rd, guys. So again, the run-up making sense to you? For the first trading day, it can be as early as the 15th of January, with most of the experts saying it will be before the end of January. This evening, we will have an X space on Bitcoin. So we did have uh, an X space, I believe, yesterday. But I mean, all the excitement, all the hype, getting the Bitcoin price up. I mean, we are still very, very close to that 0.618. So I don't know what you guys think, but I'm still waiting for that correction. But that's just my opinion. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.